Hey, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are here to review Real Housewives of Potomac. Mm. I am a new face to the Real Housewives review crew, but I have been watching Real Housewives of wherever since season one, episode one of franchise one. So I am long-term invested, okay? Real Housewives of Potomac's last season was so volatile and the online commentary drove me so up a wall that I said this year I got to talk about it. So let's talk about it. Here we go. So the episode kicks off with them flashing back to last season and they summarize uh, last season in one word, toxic. I totally agree. Okay. They flash back to Monique Money Mayweather trying to run a play and get to Candace. They flash back to Monique and her burn book at the reunion and you know all the stuff she was throwing out and saying about people uh and then we get to catching up to what's new so we get to catch up with everybody and see what they have going on wendy's got a mommy makeover that she's gonna deny robin and juan are building them a new house awesome and chris and candace have bought them a new home for 1.1 million dollars that house is absolutely beautiful i love that house okay after we get to see chris and candace's new house we go over to ashley and michael's house i i i don't like ashley and i don't like michael i'm gonna tell you right now up front okay i'm not here for them and i'm not here for their antics either so here they are and she's you know the pregnant housewife and they are you know living in their dysfunctional misery that they are trying to serve to us as a happy marriage and I ain't buying it okay if she's happy I if she if she likes it I love it live your best life sis get down Ashley is talking about the fact that they haven't had sex since she's been about four months pregnant and she's about to deliver she talks about being scared of him cheating baby all you can pray for is that, you know, he keeps it out your face because we know how he gets down. Okay. We leave their house and we go to, Gis we go with Giselle to visit Candace's new house. Now, of course, Giselle being the queen of shade that she is, she comes in, you know, making shady comments about, oh, she finally got a house of her own and you know, yada, yada, yada. Here's the thing. I don't care how long it took her. She did it. And she did it in grand style. That house is beautiful. Furthermore, this house is only about $200,000 more than what Giselle bought her house for. By the time you factor in all those renovations and additions and things like that, you could have spent the 1.1 and had a move-in ready house. So let's just be quiet about who finally did what and how they did it. Let's, let's, let's not get into that. Okay, let's tell her her house is beautiful and let's just keep on moving. Like that's the thing. Stop shading people for their accomplishments. That drives me up a wall. You're going to talk about people when they don't have it and you're going to talk about people when they do. And that's the lesson. Live for you because you can't please these people. They're going to talk about you for not doing it. And then when you do it, you, you, it took you too long. And look at girl, bye. That house is beautiful. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Candace is working on her MBA. Um, they have her bonus kids that are there. I, those kids are adorable. They seem like very, very, very sweet kids. I love Candace as a bonus mom. I think she is so good in the mom space. Now, she ain't that bright. You know, she can't help the baby with her homework and stuff. But, you know, she's sweet. She's a very... I think she's genuine and... um loving in terms of her bonus mom position and that is most important I think when you are you know especially for even the 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 biological parents you want to know that whoever is in your children's life is genuine and means them well because there are a lot of people that don't so I love seeing her and her bonus mom space now they don't know if they want none of their own but and then I don't even blame Candace for that I don't, you know, I don't, I, I don't blame Candace for not being in a rush to get pregnant and have babies. Like there, first of all, there's so much more to life. Second of all, 
they already have three kids to take care of. Um, thirdly, that's a very big commitment. It's a lot. Like you give up your life to have kids. Um, and so I don't blame her for taking her time and thinking it out and planning her life out and being sure that that's what she wants before she does it. I respect that. Moving on, they are talking about, so Giselle and Candace, you know, she gives her a tour of the house and then they sit down and talk about what's going on with them. And they get to talking about Giselle and Jamal. Giselle says they're not good. Giselle, baby, we knew that. We knew that. Now, while I don't like Monique and I don't like what she did, we all kind of knew that at the very least, there's something inauthentic, dishonest, disconnected about this relationship. We we knew that. So that's not a surprise to us. We were just kind of waiting on you to get there. And now that you're there, we can talk about it. So Giselle makes the comment that, you know, all of the COVID-related issues that are interrupting their relationship, we know better. And... Candace makes some sort of a suggestion about, you know, just dating. And Giselle says, or maybe I could just be by myself for a while. Child, I'm trying to tell you, that's a whole light bulb and life lesson. Maybe I can just be by myself for a while. When you find yourself running from relationship to relationship and they always are falling apart and working out badly and you end up hurt and you're just skipping to the next relationship to avoid dealing with whatever that was, the best thing you can do for you is take some time to just be with you. Even if for no other reason than how can you expect anybody else to be with somebody you don't want to be with? If you are afraid to be with you, why would anybody else want to be with you? If you don't love you, how, you, how, how can you teach somebody else how to love you? Because people love you according to how you teach them to love you. Right? So if I'm afraid of me, if I'm uncomfortable with me, if I don't love me, how can I expect that from a third party? So I, I'm 100% with Giselle. Maybe you should take some time and be with yourself. And that that's just some real grown woman stuff. Period. In Candace's opinion, she thinks it's the public embarrassment that broke them down. And I agree. I, I, even more so than the public embarrassment. Because I don't think Giselle was... I don't think Giselle was ignorant to the dynamics of their relationship and what he might have been doing. Giselle wasn't ignorant to that. Giselle knew, I, I truly believe Giselle knew what she was getting into. And it was a matter of dealing with the devil you know versus the devil you don't, right? But I think it was more the public exposure of it. It's one thing for us to know the dynamics personally. It's something different for those dynamics to be exposed to the public because the public doesn't understand why you're in this relationship that's about anything but love, right? Moving on. Karen and Ray are purging and planning a vow renewal. So as they're going through their things and talking about, you know, just having a conversation, talking about planning their vow renewal, who she would invite. Ray is trying to tell her this is going to have to be small because of COVID. And Karen is like, you can go to hell because I had a wedding in 25 years, so whatever. Um, and they talk about, you know, she brings up Giselle. She and Giselle at this point have completely fallen out and they are threatening to expose each other's truths. A whole middle-aged mess, okay? When those phones started going off, and Karen got that sexy invitation from Wendy. And Ray went to looking for his glasses. Can I tell you I fell out? Oh my God. Ray said where my glasses at. Play that one more time. Hold on. Let me see it again. <laughs> Ray is funny to me. Do you hear me? Ray is hilarious to me. Moving on. Okay. We get Wendy and uh, her husband go to visit her doctor for a post-op checkup. 
Wendy wants us to believe that she only got her boobs done. Baby, you got work done head to toe. And I think you got some tweaks on your personality as well. Um, Wendy was my absolute favorite. And I'm going to tell you why. I know why people didn't like Wendy. I know she might have come off as abrasive, but she was, you know, given. But I stand for educated, empowered, beautiful women who own every facet of who they are. Yes, uh, and um, for me, her leading with her degrees last season was about, I know how y'all get down. Let me let you know, you ain't gonna play with me, okay? I am educated. I am quite well employed. I uh, have every opportunity available to me. You, y'all, I know y'all are shady and y'all can serve your shade, but be very careful playing with me. I, girl, I'm here, I'm here for it. I, and so I just was, you know, it didn't bother me. I loved Wendy last season. Like, I was like, I'm in Facebook groups dragging folk behind Wendy, okay? I like me some Wendy. Wendy this season is giving me a little more plastic. And I'm just like, Wendy, I don't, it's not even about the mommy makeover, the whatever she's done to her face, there's something that has changed in her attitude and her personality that doesn't seem as grounded. And that's, I think, the thing that seems to be bothering me. Now, it might be that, you know, she got her work done and she's just feeling more confident and, you know, she's feeling more, um, maybe even feminine. And this is how her femininity is coming out. But my issue is that, why are you denying this shit? Like, why are you? Wendy, we know you got the whole body done. Like, why, Wendy? You don't have to, you don't have to lie to us. You ain't got to lie to kick it. Okay? But anyway, moving on. Robin and Juan go out to the little, um... The smoothie smoothie shop. They go to get smoothies. And when I tell y'all Juan is me, I'm not taking my mask off. Like, people be so annoyed with me. And I, I'm so sorry. Like, I am Juan and Juan is me. I am not taking my mask off to take a chance around y'all. Okay. I don't know who is who and what is what. And there is something floating in the air like Ghostbusters. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I feel one. I ain't taking my mask off. Play with somebody else. So they get to talking about um, their lifestyle and Robin's routine. Juan is turned off by the fact that Robin is sleeping all day. She doesn't get her day started till, you know between 12 and 2, um, and she's feeding the kids fast food every day, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, now, in a nutshell, it looks like lazy. It looks like Robin is just lazy. But when you hear Robin break it down, it sounds more like depression. When Robin starts to break down how, you know, there's nowhere to go. There's nothing to do. There's nothing to get dressed up for. There's nothing to look forward to. I have felt exactly like that. I mean, exactly like that. And I don't have kids or a husband that I got to get up for. So it's just, you know, I know what she's saying. And so while, um, you know, there might be a twinge of she has a lazy characteristic I think this is more a pandemic-induced depression. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, but he wants her, they want more kids. He wants more kids. He wants little girls. Um, but he wants Robin to be, be more motivated. So, uh, and you know, maybe with them getting back to work and back to filming, she'll have something to be motivated, motivated for. 
Um, but I, I, I get where both of them are coming from, you know. So we go back to Chris and Candace's house. The kids are there. They are doing, you know, he's cooking in the kitchen. The baby needs help with her homework. And Candace thinks this basic math problem is SAT math. Candace. Candace. What? Thank God for the big brother who could step in and help that baby with her math. You need to go get you a workbook and work on some of the math problems, okay? You need to evaluate yourself. So then they talk about the fact that they may or may not want kids of their own one day. But they're still using condoms. I'm just skim right on past that because I'm I, that, that degree of the married people business. I'm gonna stay out of. That's one thing Candace will invite y'all. They, they will they will tell you about their genitalia and the bedroom life. Okay, and I don't want no parts. You know if that's how y'all agree to get down and that's what works for y'all marriage. That's what works for y'all marriage. Moving on. Everybody's getting ready for Wendy's um nude experience party. And they're all consulting their kids on what to wear, which I think is so cute. Giselle's daughter is so grown up. And thank God she told her to put that pink dress back. Because Giselle, while you are a very light-skinned black woman, you are not pink. Go sit down. We get to Wendy's house. It's all about to go down. Okay? Robin and Giselle arrive first. They are looking around, they're going around the name play, the name cards on the table. They see there's a new girl coming and they don't know who she is. So we meet Mia in the car with Karen. Karen is briefing her on all the girls and she gives this whole, we're gonna experience Wendy together. Didn't you experience her last season? But this is Karen, you know, Karen's new every season. So everyone's arriving. Wendy comes down in her robe, you know, waiting on the final guest to arrive so that she could do her big reveal. She mentions that Candace is not coming while Karen is in the car saying how Candace is who she's looking forward to seeing the most because we know she kind of really shafted Candace last season. She was not I don't care what anybody says. That whole ride in the fence is she's trying to be a good friend to both. I didn't buy it. I'm not here for it. I believe that situations like that situation last season serve to expose to you who people are in your life. I think that exposed that Karen is no one's friend. That as much as she, you know, accepted uh, Candace's love and Candace, you know, calling her like a second mom and one of her favorite people on earth and blah, 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 that... Can't, that Karen really does not care about anybody but Karen. That's the vibe that I got. Now that the dust, that the chips have fallen where they may, the dust has settled, and Candace is the one left standing on the show. Now she wants to, you know, just check her temperature and see how she is, and you know, because she went through so much last year, and uh, and 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 she wants to, girl. Bye. Karen and Mia arrive at the house. Giselle turns around on the couch. And this is where this episode decides it's going to explode. Whew. Giselle said Karen came in the house and didn't make her first order of business apologizing for all of the comments that she made about Giselle and her relationship and her family or, you know, whatever else. And so now it's on. But then here's my thing, Giselle. She's in the confessional saying things like, well, she didn't walk in and make her first order of business to say, I'm sorry I lost my mind because Ray doesn't love me. How is that different? How is that different from her running around talking about your relationship with Jamal? How if you have in past seasons made comments about 
Ray wanting whoever Erica Lyles is. You and and Ray not wanting her and she's cheating with her driver or her assistant or whoever. How you're and you are continuing to make these comments about her relationship. So how does she owe you more? How does she owe you and your situation more respect than you give to hers? You have always been after Karen. With the uncle, the free uncle Ben campaign. You have been after Karen and her marriage. So how, how dare you sit up on your perch about, oh, she best apologize to me and say it's just because her husband didn't love her. Well, your husband didn't love you. How does that feel? You, you married a man who you knew was a chronic, notorious serial cheater. And was doing it in the church at that. But you were so attached to being the first lady that you weren't willing to walk away from that. You married that man anyway. You married that man knowing who he was and how he got down. You had children with that man knowing who he was and how he got down. So you are not, you and your situation are not above reproach, especially when you keep Smoke for Karen and her marriage. You keep smoke for Karen. You keep it. And this is not even in defense of Karen because Karen got her own stuff with her. But you got to be on one to think you can run around telling somebody about every problem, divot, issue in their marriage and they better not say nothing about you dating your ex-husband who went on social media to make it clear he's not in a relationship with you. You blowing smoke up the wrong tailpipes. Whew, child. So anyway, Karen and Mia come in and sit down. So they all get to talking and they start to introduce Mia with her stats. Uh, that she is an entrepreneur. She owns the Joint Chiropractic and owns multiple locations up and down the East Coast. Um, she has three children with her husband, who she said is 38 years older than her. She says he's 68. They asked her age by her by the stats she gave. He would have been 30. And we figure out she can't do math either. Math is clearly a struggle on this show. The math ain't mathing for nobody. I don't understand. So she ends up saying she is 36. Her husband is 68. She said he was 30 years old. He was 38 years old. And he's the man 32 years old than her. Okay. My, my deduction from this is either the girl ain't book bright or she liked to lie. One or the other. I don't know yet. So after they run down Mia's stats and they finally get the math to math about the age difference between she and her husband, Wendy goes in to make her reveal. She gives this long speech, Lord, about how she wasn't living for herself. She was only living for her children. She decided she wanted to do, you know, do something for herself and blah, 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 blah. She finally unveils her new boobs that she calls happiness uh, and simultaneously denies getting any other work done while keeping on a robe to hide all the other work she had done. Girl, we ain't crazy. We can see your face is different. We know your boobs is different. We know you ain't had no butt last season. Now you got the big boobs, the little waist, and the little butt. Now what I will give her is it's very natural looking. Thank God she didn't go, you know, looking crazy. But this is, um, no, you got a whole mommy makeover, BBL included. Stop. Okay? Like, just be honest. Just tell the truth. Like, we can see it. And what happens is when things are this obvious and you go out of your way to lie about it, you damage your reputation, you insult our intelligence, and then 
we don't trust you no more. We lose respect. We lose trust because it's like you can't even be honest about this. And then it does kind of make people wonder, well, why? Well, is this why you led with your degrees? Because you weren't confident? Because a confident person, I would think, and it's not even about having the surgery is, is not is why you're not confident because I haven't pushed three babies out and I, you know, and I have my own body issues and I don't know. I cannot tell you that if I had three children that I myself wouldn't look to have a mommy makeover. I cannot tell you that. So that's not the issue. The issue is when you're not confident enough any decision that you made for yourself to stand in that decision. When you are woman enough to do it, be woman enough to say you did it. That's all. You know, it, it's not, you wanted to get your body done. And I've done everything else. I went to school. I got my degrees. I got my career off the ground. I have a good marriage and I have beautiful children. I have secured a nice home, you know, and now I, I, I even have a venture with the housewives. Now I want to do my body. I, this is just something I want to do for fun. Like just tell the truth. That's the issue. That's the issue. It ain't about what you had done or if because I am of the belief everybody up there has had something done. Everybody. Just be honest. That's all. And I'm with Robin. Don't invite me to your house, especially if it's halfway across the state, to reveal the work you had done and then lie to me and say, oh, I got was my boobs done. Girl, we can see. Now, if you don't show me the whole damn thing, what did you invite me here for? Oh, Lord. But all that said, she looks amazing. So Mia, they all go sit down to the table and Mia asks, Wendy, are your breasts all you got done? And Wendy, see, and this is what happens when you don't stand in your truth. You get defensive and angry when people are just trying to have a conversation with you, okay? So, she's like, is that all you had done? Because it's obvious. <sighs> and so she, yes, that's all I had done. What have you had done? Because you look like you've had a lot of work. And sis ran a list, okay? The sis said, yeah, I get Botox every four weeks. I got fillers. I got my boobs done a couple times. I got my tummy tucked. I got my ass done. I got... And she's like, I can continue to go on. She's like, because I own it. Well, I respect that. I, 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 you know, she, you own it. I, all I can do is respect that. So, and then she goes on to say she even had her clit done. You know, Two things. Some things are too much information. And people got more money than they got self-esteem. Okay? It... Did y'all not watch Death Becomes Her growing up? Like, maybe because I watched that movie till I couldn't watch it no more as a kid. Or the I'm gonna get you sucker scene where... He meets this bad chick in the club. He takes her home and she starts breaking down like a damn Lego doll. Um, That's the only thing for me. It's like, please love yourself. And I can, I am speaking as a woman who is, is self-aware, is very aware of the flaws I have physically, of even things that I might like to have tweaked or done. But love yourself. Please, my God, like, people have more money than they have self-esteem. And that's why, you know, if you are, some, if, and this is just a PSA, if you are someone who is in the in-between stages in life and you are finding your way and you haven't quite met your success yet, you might be being processed for when you get there because you don't want to get there and be so insecure that the that that your success becomes a curse or a burden to the degree that you don't feel 
that who you are as you are, are qualified for it. You are enough. You are good enough. You are, you, if you are, if you can arrive to it, you are qualified for it. Please love yourself. Get the self-esteem before you get the money. Because having money with no wisdom or no self-esteem can be a recipe for disaster. That That's it. So they start serving food. That soup sounds amazing. I'm sorry. I'm a foodie. I just needed to get that. Your coconut curry cream of crab soup. I just needed to get that off my chest. That soup sounds so damn good. How they could fire off into this damn war they went into over that soup. I don't know. But Jesus be a fence because it was bad. So they bring out the soup and they start to talk about Candace's absence. Um, and that Candace is having some sort of sickness, some sort of stomach issue. And that's why she's not there. They speculate that she's really not there because she don't want to see Karen. She ain't trying to, you know, kick it with Karen like that after what they have been through. So Karen and Ashley are both speaking about, uh, the state of their relationships with Candace and how, you know, Ashley's like, you know, I don't think we'll ever get to a good place. You might not because you, you, the way they did Candace last season, I'm sorry. I I don't like it. And if Candace never wants to have a relationship with them, I understand because I'm not giving you but one time to cross me like they crossed her. This girl done jumped on me and you go to defend her and make excuses for her. And you wrote a statement that you know wasn't true because you want to get back at me because me and you don't like each other? No, nah, Snake. We never. We, we going to be Cardi B about our beef. We going to have forever. Okay? Forever. So anyway, Wendy, you know, in response to this expresses that it's her hope that they can all collectively be in a great space one day. And Giselle fired off. Giselle says, well, that's going to be difficult. And everybody's like, well, why? Why would, why would that be difficult? And Giselle says, well, because we all know I can't stand Karen. Well, well, just fight. Like, what the hell? So Giselle just comes out and she says, you know, I can't stand Karen. Me and Karen probably will never be good. And what I've decided is I'll just tell you truth. Your drunk truth, your cheating truth, your broke truth. Karen tells her to shut up and well, let's talk about your hot box. When I tell you, I sat just like this for the entirety of this scene in utter shock, okay? All I could do was hug myself and just, what? When Karen started screaming about she got a hot box and what's going on between your legs and that's why you can't keep a ma- Apparently, I missed the stop to get off this bus because the bus is in hell now. What the hell? And Giselle's response is, you know, she's obsessed with my lady parts because her man's man parts don't work. To which Karen responds, you ain't gonna disrespect my husband when the man you calling your man has his man parts and everybody's lady's parts. Gotcha. Why Jesus don't take the wheel? Why is he letting them, he just letting them drive this bus through hell? Why won't Jesus take the wheel? I don't understand. And the episode ends with Karen telling Giselle she is a broken whore from Hampton University 
and everybody knows it. And that's why they went to Sing Sing. I don't understand. I'm so confused. First of all, I am jolted by this exchange. I'm like, what in the hell? But what does Sing Sing have to do with it? Somebody, please explain it to me. I'm so confused. And I don't want to wait a week to figure this out. What in the hell does Sing Sing have to do with hot boxes and ham and 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 what? What is going, Lord? So yeah, um, that concluded the episode. Uh, it's to be continued, and we will pick up in the middle of this fight and find out what Sing Sing got to do with anything. Next week, I assume. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming to, ch you know, listen to this review so I don't have to deal with all of this alone. Let me get it off my chest. As always, I appreciate you. I will be right here uh, next week. We will, I'm also reviewing Love and Marriage Huntsville when that comes back next week. We'll probably be doing Family or Fiance. I might do Love and Hip Hop Atlanta only because I need to break some things down about Eric Huntsville. I, I, I can't. Um, but I'll be review. We'll be adding some shows to the rotation. Subscribe to the channel so that you can get all of that. Please get in the comments. Give me your feedback. If you disagree with my opinion, let me know. If you know what the hell Sing Sing got to do with anything, please get in the comments and let me know. Um, like, comment, subscribe, share it with a friend. I'd love to have you. As always, thank you for coming by my channel. I appreciate you. Love you, mean it. Bye. See you next time.